It is week number nine of the high school football season in Georgia. Week eight in Florida and some of our teams still sitting undefeated on the year. Could they keep it going tonight? And Brooks County hasn't played in a month. The Trojans making their return to the gridiron tonight. Brooks County at Early County. It's our game of the week. That matchup and so much more. Friday Night Overtime starts right now. ABC 27 Friday Night Overtime. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Friday Night Overtime. It is week nine of the high wow. school football season in Georgia. Where did it go, right? Week number eight in Florida. Just three more weeks in the regular season, guys, and a lot of teams making that final push to make the playoffs. Brooks County, four and one on the year. They've played only five games, a cancellation in two bye weeks. The Trojans haven't played since September 16th, a weird year for them kind, so far. Do you think they put the cleats on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the boys <laughs> from Quitman, they were on the field tonight, folks, and uh, more than ready to play. <laughs> Head coach Maurice Freeman told us if they didn't play tonight, he was checking himself into <laughs> rehab, but he's not going, guys. Good Brooks news. County <laughs> was at undefeated early county tonight. It was our Friday night overtime game of the week. So to the peanut capital <laughs> of the world, we go. You didn't bring any home with nope. you, Kyle. The Trojans are looking for their 13th straight win in this series. That's right, and Brooks would get hot early on their first drive. The give goes to Savion Kaysen, and he has a lot of room, splits the defense, and there he will he take it to the house. The Trojans would take the early 7-0 lead. And then that Brooks County defense, they haven't played in a while, <laughs> coming alive tonight, ensuing catch drive, and here comes Kamari Blanksamy for the sack. Early would have to punt. To the second, seven all now. The Trojans defense bowing up on third and short. Cats going nowhere, and they would turn it over on down. And that Brooks County offense gets back to work. Jamal Sanders buying time, unleashing a rocket downfield to Kamari Brinson. Beautiful catch deep in Cats territory. And that would set up this. Javen Watts, the Wildcat, and he gets in. Brooks led 14 to 7 at the half, and they would go on to win big in this one, 34 to 7. Welcome back to the field, guys. To Nashville we go. Barry and playing host to Cook tonight in the Hornets offense. They were red hot in this one. Mid one, Drew Folsom connects with his man, J.D. Smith, for the touchdown. Cook leads 7 nothing. Later, tied at 7 now. More from Cook. Cook, Folsom, this time finding Sean Thompson on the slant. He's an easy. Cook goes back in front. Here come the Rebels, though, led by this defense. Cook going forward on fourth and one. They are not going to get it. Big Cook, stop. though, too much tonight overall. They win big, 45-28. to Thomasville in a region matchup tonight against Columbus, already up 14-0. And Jay Randall here on offense. How about he takes it to the left side, and he will also take it to the house to there he goes. put the score up 21 to nothing Ooh, in the second quarter. The I like that. And the dogs, they would just keep pouring it on. Keyshawn Jordan gets the INT Allison, Hello. and he will take it back. 35 to nothing for Thomasville. How about the dogs? 56 to 7 winner tonight over Columbus. Big win. 7-0, perfect on the year. That is North Florida Christian this season, and they are doing it in style, folks. Scoring over 43 points per game, and over those seven games, they've given up just 34 points total. Not too bad. Homecoming night and a big district game for the Eagles and a tribute to longtime Eagle fan Willie Neal who passed away earlier this week. His famous game day cheer, hold that line on NFC's helmet. Honoring him with a big win tonight. Traylon Ray getting the party started, takes the pitch, finds the sideline. Eagles lead 7-0 over Rocky Bayou. Their defense holding Rocky's offense. So with the ball again, check this. J.P. Pickles looking like he's in trouble. Runs Stunned. about 40 yards left to right. Gets out of the tackle. Takes the opposite sideline and runs 40 yards <laughs> straight ahead. Play of the week. There you go. <laughs> Eagles, they win big on homecoming. 55-0, your final score.
The Gobby Cougars hosting Florida High tonight at Childs, though. The Knolls undefeated for a reason. They're good. Ryder Popple here running left. He finds a hole and he, he scores on a long run, and it's 14 to nothing <laughs> Florida High. How about later, though, Jeremy Johnston? How about through the air? Florida High's offense going to find some success tonight. Jeremy Johnston, he's got some time, and he is going to find Ashton Hampton for the score. 21 nothing, 51 to 7 is is your final. Swift Creek Middle joining Lincoln Band tonight, putting on a show too. Tie ball game here, second quarter. Rickards getting to work. Jakari Winters finding Rico Watkins. That is good for the first down. And that Raider offense, they would keep it moving. Inside the 10, Watkins, he's just going to take the snap now and off he goes in for six points. Extra point would be no good, so it's 13 7 Raiders. Rickards, they get the big district win over Lincoln. 19 to 7. Ostilla Christian winners of two straight. The Warriors four and two on the year in their first season of 1A Rural. Looking good and feeling great heading into tonight's matchup with Harvest Community. So looking to win three straight tonight and Jace Grant He's leading that offense. And Allison, he's a bulldozer yeah, he doing Big his boy. part on the opening possession, breaking several tackles and runs 29 yards for the touchdown at 7 0. Next possession facing fourth and long. Grant this time out of the Wildcat, the hurdle. A big first down before he's knocked out. A couple plays later, he cashes in with a touchdown, and it's 14 to nothing, Warriors. They go on to get the big win, 34 to 16. Just stay out of that man's way. <laughs> Down the road at Jefferson County, the Tigers observing Breast Cancer Awareness Month, hosting Wildwood. Uh, no cure for this Wildcat offense, though. Jamari Dickens keeping it up the middle for the touchdown. 12 0 Wildwood. A little bit later, taking advantage of the Jefferson County interception. Another score. Not a good night for the home team. Tigers fall into Wildwood. Hey, football, we got a lot more coming up. Cheerleaders, you know what to do. Time little little Rocky Balboa <laughs> there. I have the Tiger going on. The Bulldog Marching Band from Thomasville High School, our band of the week. Pumping us up, and they also Rocky Balboa their way <laughs> over Columbus tonight. That's a good joke. Yeah, you wrote it. I did write it. <laughs> I made him say it too. Corny is my middle name. Now McClay making the trip from Leon County to Cornfield. Taking on Monroe for most of the first half in this one, a defensive battle. Monroe's Jeremiah Johnson recording the sack on this play. The Monroe offense was able to move the ball early in the first quarter. Luke Saith of the QB connecting with his receiver. Not a lot of offense though on either side until we left, <laughs> Till of now. course, because <laughs> such is life. 42 to nothing. Monroe gets the win. They improved to four and three. The Gadsden County Jaguars hosting the Bulldogs from Mariana tonight. Gadsden led 12-0 at the half, and it helped because throughout the game they got a stout defensive effort, wasting little time, extending their lead in the third. This is Cedric Bird taking the handoff here, and he is going to race down the Mariana sideline for a big-time score. Gadsden also tacking on a two-point conversion. 20 to nothing there. The Jags big winner, second in a row, 39 to nothing. The Bainbridge Bearcats got back to their winning ways last week after losing back to back ball games on the road tonight at Shaw looking for a big 4A Region 1 victory. So to Columbus we go, a night that would belong to the Cats. First half action, Bainbridge striking first thanks to Keenan Phillips busting through for the score and the Cats go in front 7 zip and they would keep <laughs> on scoring tonight. Huge win, big region win, 42 to 13. To Miller County, the Pirates taking on Randolph Clay. J.P. Powell here with a big run, shedding tacklers to put the Pirates so right close. at the goal line. But the Devils defense able to stop them. They won't be able to convert this drive. But how about the next drive? They will. Elijah Williams bobbing and Ooh, weaving his way through okay. the pile. A spin move. He just did it all, folks. To put the Pirates up 14-0 before the half, and they will go on to win 
by the same score, 14 to nothing. And GIAA football, Brookwood at Southland tonight. Tie game here. TJ Thomas always doing big <laughs> things for Brookwood. Great catch, skirts the tackle. The Warriors take the lead. Brookwood, they cruise. Big win, 57 to 14. The final score. My favorite night right here. Really? Flashback Friday. And it started, of course, last night at Gene Cox. Homecoming for Leon hosting Childs. Big district game two. Scoreless in the first until Trey Jones changes that. The handoff. And he does what he does best. Runs the football and pick up a 40. And just let the man finish his job. Right, okay. Allison? How about an easy six for the Timberwolves? And they would have no issues last night. Childs, the homecoming Spoiler, 34 to 6, your final. St. John Paul II, they lost a close one to Wakulla last week. On the road at Panama City Beach, Arnold last night, striking early and often. Handoff here, going to Jaden Walden. He breaks outside. No one's got the speed to catch him. 7 0 Panthers. Second quarter of 14 to 6. Tremaine Hughes, he just does it all in the air, <laughs> on the ground, going to the ground there. Untouched to the so house. So many things. Uh, so many things. Panthers <laughs> led 21 to 6 at the break. They'd get the big road win last night, 42 to 19, the final score over the Arnold Marlins. So we still have undefeated teams, a mm -hmm. lot of undefeated teams, some teams getting another win after getting their first win last week. So I can't believe there's only three weeks left in the season. Yeah, a lot of win streaks and a lot of good teams showing mm -hmm. just how good they are. I think that's been an important thing. We've seen teams like Florida High and some of those South Let's Georgia see. teams, Brooks County, good to see them get back on the field. After and a month. And One month. Good and to Coach Freeman see, is not, not going in to rehab. rehab so we're He's good. just going back to Quitman tonight for those <laughs> there. So uh, a good night for them and a good night for a lot of teams in our area. And hopefully a good night tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Florida State hosting Clemson tomorrow night. You can watch that game right here on ABC 27. <laughs> Kickoff is at 7.30. FAMU at Grambling tomorrow. And big homecoming for Valdosta State. Yeah, hosting Mississippi College. And, you know, that wing tee, that triple option. Yep. We'll see if they can uh, get back on the winning side. A big one for them. They need that one they bad. Do.